Good day to all of our listeners here at Asenor Fireside Chat. We are indeed very happy to be on our second season this time around. So I wish to congratulate all of the members of the team of Asenor for completing one whole season. Today, we are starting another season of Asenor Fireside Chat and I'm very happy to have with me the co-founder of Asenor, Ms. Ilen Agpasa. Hello Ilen, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. Hello Sir Bob. Yeah, I'm also happy we have reached this far and but I am also very very happy because we have a very special guest. And this special guest is also special to me. Um, she's my former teacher. She's a professor and she's well versed in psychometrics and psychological assessment. Okay. So I'm really going to introduce to you uh, Ma'am Remy Bakulao. Hi, Ma'am. Hi, Ma'am. Hello. Thank you. Welcome to our fireside chats. Okay. Thank you so much for having us, uh, having this time with us. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you, you are familiar with a senior, uh, one of our advocacy is uh, for productive aging and healthy aging. And um, we are so glad that we are able to invite you. You know, Ma'am Remy actually just retired recently. And yes, Ma'am, um, she also enrolled in one of our online courses. That is why I was happy. So, Ma'am Rems, uh, how was it like um, doing the online course, okay, with all those using the, the technology? So, how was it? Actually, initially, it was a struggle because uh, being a senior, I'm not so uh, well-versed in the technical aspect. Okay, so I was fortunate I had my daughter to help out sometimes. And it was more of a struggle when I retired and then I was asked to teach part-time and via online because of the pandemic. I used to teach face-to-face, but when it comes yeah. to pandemic, I have to do it online. So the first thing I did is I have to buy my own laptop. Because before okay. when I was not retired yet, I was depending the equipment in the office. For my yeah. yeah, but it was, well, uh, kind of good that um, it did not stop you from uh, doing the, shall we say, keeping up with the technology, diba? So you said that there was this struggle here, but then you did, it, that, it did not stop you from still using it. In fact, you buy your own laptop, okay? So where did that uh, motivation came from? Well, of course, uh, the motivation is that I should not uh, stop learning or doing my uh, usual passion to teach and be encumbrance by the technology. So I tried to really learn. So I yeah. learned uh, the pandemic taught me something also about learning the technology. Because uh, when I was in the office, I had secretaries to do the the job related to computer, I just did the work, uh, type it, everything. Because uh, I'm very slow in typing. Uh, once upon a time, I enrolled in typing, but I always ask my teacher, do not grade me. <laughs> it's either one or five is the grading system. And then you know, uh, I'm not so good at it. So, yeah. But yeah, but doing all those things, ma'am, um, how was it? How does it make you feel? Like, yeah, you were able to use technology and then in fact, you were able to continue with your work and classes, although not the full-time kind of work, but just like part-time for you also to have like to feel active, okay, while retired. So how does it make you feel? Uh, it make, makes me feel still uh, young at my age. And then able to cope with uh, the changing times. And it makes my brain work uh, and not stagnate. Yeah. Uh, the saddest thing is to let yourself stagnate. Yeah. Mom, let me ask you you retired in 2019. 
how was the transition from being very busy? I'm quite sure you had been busy because you were teaching uh, the, the, the graduate students and perhaps you also had some undergraduate students. You must have been very busy when you were still in school. But after retirement, how was your environment? How was your daily routine? How was your, let's say, um, what did your day consist of? What did you do? And how was that transition? Was it easy for you or did you encounter difficulties adjusting to, your new, to this new chapter in your life? Uh, I really didn't have much difficulty because prior to retirement, I asked Ching. Uh, Ching asked me to help her out in her work in Soto. So uh, after my retirement, uh, be before the pandemic, I used to go to Soto and help her out with uh, some uh, trauma assessment. So in her private capacity, not for the government. So I used to go there twice a week. And she has an office where I used to go. But when the pandemic arises, uh, it stopped because uh, the restrictions, travel, etc. So I was thinking, yeah, I still could do something. So I do the chores and I plan. I reconnect with my friends, chat, to go tripping with my friends to the mountains. Yeah, it's fortunate that I had friends who had a means of transport. And then when they say, let's go to this and that, I go with them. We just share the gasoline and everything. So actually, it's not a very difficult transition for me. Yeah, That's because there was like, know. yeah, sir, because there was like some form of continuity. So even like she's retired from, Mamrem is retired from her full-time work being a teacher and at the same time um, in the testing center, but there was also a form of continuity because she also do uh, trauma assessment. Mm -hmm. So there's continuity and also like, reconnecting with friends. Okay, those are the things that are really also very important. Oh. Mom, with your experience with the online classes, online courses, oh, and then um, how was it? Like how important it is um, to still learn even at this stage in life? Yeah, it's a challenge actually because uh, initially, a uh, good thing at that time, my daughter was working from home. So every time there's technical glitch, I call my daughter, oh, help out, help out. Uh, why is this not moving? And then the, the internet connection. And also, it's not only me who has problem with connection, also my students. So it's really a struggle. They could not attend the class. So I get assignment, etc. So and that was a struggle. And then in the 2020, when the pandemic broke out, uh, there was restrictions. So I, I managed to stay at home, keep myself busy. And there are free webinars. I attended all the free webinars that I could put my hands into whenever there's no conflict with my other activities. So that's it. Which providers do you usually frequent? What kind of topics do you usually enroll in? Sa mga free webinars, ma'am. Because I'm a member of the PAP and PGCA, topics from that organization I always strive to attain. So, Philippine Guidance Counseling Association webinars, Philippine Psychological Association webinars, at that time, it was free, 2020, so I, I strive to attend that. Then later, when it comes a little bit close, they ask for payment already. So I choose those who will not need payment. <laughs> does it, does your... it help? Does it help, mom, like um, still continuing with the uh, yeah, learning? Yeah, it, it, it makes your brain work. Even if you are not 
practicing in a quality now because of these restrictions. Then I don't have a private office. So it helps just to learn uh, something to enhance. Because uh, once in a while you encounter some friends who have problems and you don't need to go to a profession, other profession, just ask me. That's nice, or Bob, if we have concerns and problems, you could just ask Mom Remy, it's for free. <laughs> <laughs> a senior would gladly take your services and uh, whatever, whatever you can share to the group and our patrons. I'm quite sure they will be able to benefit much from your experience. Now, Mom, to you, why do you believe it is important to stay active even at this, we would say, stage in your life when most people ha would, would rather stay home and just rest? Why do you think it is still necessary to still be up to date with the developments in your specialization? to be active physically. Uh, why do you believe these things are important? Uh, I believe it's one way of avoiding Alzheimer's. It's good for our brain health uh, because uh, the mind is stimulated when you try to learn something new. I think that's really one of the selling points that we should tell our, our uh, viewers, our yeah, listeners yeah. that by staying active, by mentally engaging our brains, we will be able to help avoid Alzheimer's. Yeah. Because uh, That's usually true. at certain age, some will already have signs of Alzheimer's. Uh, I'm fortunate that uh, within my 1990 classes, I still remember my students. So hopefully it will stay that way, that I will not lose uh, my faculty of remembering. Because my mother is 90 years old, she, she has no Alzheimer's yet. So maybe I might be able to imitate or the same with my mom. Yeah, okay. So um, to all those um, others also, ma'am, who are like retired already and for those who are in their senior years, um, any like uh, message of encouragement for them? Yeah, um, those who are retiring, uh, just accept that uh, once you reach a certain age, uh, if you're in a private company, if it's the government, you really have are asked to, to retire. But it does not mean uh, you are tired, you should stay active. Okay? It's either by learning, doing some hobbies, or uh, being financially uh, equipped for business if you are good at it, so that uh, your brain works and it will keep away the Alzheimer's the dreaded disease of the aging people. And uh, it helps also to be uh, physically active. Uh, some will do yoga, other things, exercise. I'm too lazy for that. I just do the chores in lieu of that, mop the floors, etc. <clears throat> and uh, it's sometimes uh, the back pains where, you know, Sweeping, yes. uh, I do yes. that. I don't hire helpers. I do the washing. So mm. being active keeps you awake, alert. Being active also makes one sweat and be sexy. <laughs> Unfortunately, I yeah. I, make, um, I eat. After I cook, I will think of the next meal. <laughs> <laughs> and like okay. in the office, I was busy. I could not think of food. But now when the food is accessible, I'm the one who markets. And then I, okay. I plan menu in my brain. <laughs> What's the next menu? <laughs> that it will not be repeated. So, mom, 
from time to time you attend webinars you also take some trip together with your friends and yeah. then you also love to eat plan cooking plan your meals go to the market cooking what else do you do during these times so that you will prevent yourself from becoming bored i take care of my cats and dogs <laughs> wow how many cats and dogs do you have mom uh, i have two dogs uh, there's one cat inside her and there are four cats outside and uh, okay yeah. actually the started one it multiplies and there's still four i need to discuss because they're very productive why, why do you encourage if you already have if you have three cats plus one inside and then you have two dogs when people would ask you why do you have these pets why do you have this number of pets how would you respond to them actually it's just uh for love or kindness to animals uh, most of my dogs are uh, my dog the first dog is adopted actually uh it's Ascal. Uh, he just come to our gate hungry and I was still at the other house at the time it's not my own house yet it's my mother-in-law's house so uh, we just lost a dog a guard dog so we adopted that one so, and my second dog it's I could not refuse my friend she's the one I always uh, accompany she has a van to transport us to our laag so she brought that dog to me and I could not refuse. It's already big because uh, of the pandemic. And that friend is a lover of dogs. She has 16 dogs. And wow. She has Rosa. Yeah. So I think she, she budgeted 600 a day for the animals. Wow, 600. Yeah. More than the minimum daily wage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's a animal lover. She has one dog that uh, stayed with her for 16 years. And she has lots of dogs. <laughs> Mom, my... Mom, uh, Remy, we would yeah. like to thank you very much for the time that you have spent with us. But I would uh, see Elen already asked you a while ago why you, what your message is for our listeners with regard to the necessity or the importance of being productive. But this time around, especially during the time of the pandemic, I would like to ask you to leave or share a message to our listeners, especially the senior citizen, the importance of being safe, the importance of social distancing, and what are the tips that you can share with them so that they will be able to still remain healthy and safe even during this time of pandemic? Uh, for the seniors, because there are so many restrictions for the seniors, I ask or encourage them to, to just follow what's prescribed. That, uh, you, you practice social distancing, you wear uh, face masks and face shields, and then avoid group uh, gatherings. You know, even if I go on trip with my friends, we, we have we are only four or five in the group. We maintain social distancing uh, when we eat out. Okay. So I usually stay home. I don't uh, roam around the neighborhood if I don't have anything uh, important to buy. Okay. So if it's not necessary for you to, to go out, then Stay home and do your plans or whatever is your uh, uh, liking to do. So let's try to be safe. Have yourself vaccinated. Encourage others to do the same. Um, I've been encouraging also my relatives at home in the province to have vaccination because my mother is already 90 and even if my mother don't like to be vaccinated at least the people surrounding here my nephews I 
ask them to be vaccinated if they're the one going out. They might bring in something. So let's be uh, careful, especially if we have comorbidities. Okay. Uh, do not fear the vaccine. Actually, uh, initially I was fearful of the vaccine because um, uh, what will happen if you know the virus cannot fight with that because uh, I have maintenance for my blood pressure. So, but and especially uh, people are uh, telling me some of the fake news. So I researched on my own on the effectivity of some vaccine. I was vaccinated with AstraZeneca. And the reason I, I fear the Astra because there was a case reported on blood clotting. Uh -huh. So I had varicose. So that's why I relate to that. So I might have blood clotting because I have varicose, etc. So, but same I, here, but, AstraZeneca too. Fully hmm. vaccinated, two doses already. Good. So, so I overcome my fear. I just say, uh, I pray to God that it will be all right. So, so but I encourage uh, people to keep safe, stay at home. If you don't have uh, essentials to do outside, then just stay home. Do your things. There's so many things you can do. You can even rearrange your pictures or um, clean the house, do your plants with your animals. There's so many. You can chat with your foreigner friends. <laughs> Ikaw, ma'am, you have foreigner friends? <laughs> yeah, I have. Wow. <laughs> and anyway, um, we. We have already exhausted our time. We would like to thank Mom Remy for the opportunity to speak with her and talk about her life even after retirement. So again, as we all the time say here in A Senor, retiring does not mean the twilight of your years immediately. You can still become a very productive member of our society. And you have a lot of things to be able to give back to our society from which our society can learn from. In behalf of Asenor, this is Bobby and Cheta. Yes, and I'm Ilen. And we would like to thank all of our listeners, also our resource person this uh, this episode, Mam Remy Bakulao. Thank you for listening to us, and we hope that you will join us once again in our future episodes. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Thank you.